What's up everybody, Trinity here and welcome back to the Second Street Marvel. In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing Ice Cream Man, issue number 15. Now before I get into that, please make sure you subscribe, click the little bell and all of that good stuff that YouTube tells me to tell you to do. And I gotta admit, sometimes I need a reminder myself. So as I said today, I'm going to be reviewing Ice Cream Man issue number 15. Now if you guys haven't ever read this book, I've got to tell you, if you're into like horror comics or something, this one, it's, I mean, it's a horror, but it's not even really like horror-ish. It just kind of, it's kind of eerie. It leaves me feeling a little weird after every, after every, after every issue I read. It's, I don't know how to explain it, but it's really, really good. So once again, in issue number 15, uh, W. Maxwell Prince does a great job writing this story. Uh, Martin Marazzo does a good job drawing it. Uh, we've also got uh, the colors by Chris O'Halloran and the lettering by Good Old Neon. And you can go ahead and see that there. And they even have a little caption there um, underneath underneath where they're asking you, they says, uh, what did your parents pass on to you? And uh, which is kind of interesting because that kind of plays into... Uh, Kind of plays into the story here. Again, uh, it looks like we're basically uh, starting off in what looks to be like a mental asylum. Um, uh, uh, you know, just a place where you know uh, that we open up to uh, this doctor and this uh, other you know uh, nurse uh, going in, entering this padded cell uh, to talk to this young name, uh, young lady named Lily. And uh, Lily is there. She's uh, they're talking about how she's kind of uh, gone crazy, and she's calling uh, the doctor here. Calls this uh, cathexis. Cathexis? I think that's how you say it. Um, emotional attachment to objects and ideas. And I've got to tell you, it really gets into some pretty crazy stuff here. As we go, uh, we see that the, the young lady Lily here is somewhat uh, delusional. She's having, uh, just has these imaginations of things that uh, have happened in her past. And it's saying that it's, she's basically just like her mother, is what this doctor and this nurse are saying there uh, in the hospital. And then we go on and as she's uh, talking to the doctor, uh, Dr. Sweet is the name of the doctor here uh, who is here to help Lily. And as, as they're sitting there talking, you know, she's kind of telling her about, you know, this, uh, this boy with a balloon, the jacket and how it wasn't hers and a field full of lilies. Pretty crazy stuff, right? And then so we go ahead and we flash to the scene um, that is back in the past where we see Lily going out on a date uh, with this man. She's out, out having dinner. And um, in the middle of dinner, <laughs> this guy says, if climate change is a hoax, then the, then the joke's on us. And <laughs> Lily here says, Mitch, buddy, you seem like enough nice enough guy, but my God, is there anything more banal than talking about the weather on our first date? And he says, I'm just trying to make conversation. And she goes, and hey, great try. But you're only making my labia... <laughs> She says, but the only thing you're making is my labia dry. And uh, that's just kind of where it starts off. And uh, he's kind of like, well, uh, you're a real pill now, aren't you? And, you know, she's kind of, you can see she's upset. So she goes, uh, she has she has dinner. She leaves this guy there at the dinner table at this restaurant and goes, you know, she proceeds to leave and she goes to pick up her jacket. And um, it turns out that they've got the wrong jacket of hers. She gets up, up there to, uh, for, to the coat return and uh, to grab, grab her jacket, and you, we see that she's uh, making a text here uh, to, a, to a very close friend. So she goes to pick up the jacket, and she's like, hey, this isn't mine. He's like, well, it's the only one back here, uh, and it's mighty cold out there. So she goes ahead, and uh, she takes the jacket, and then uh, she leaves the restaurant uh, with the guy sitting there, kind of like, dude, what the hell just happened? And believe me, I've, I've been on a date like that before. Um, crazy stuff. But uh, so, so she takes off walking down the street in this jacket that's not hers, and she comes across this boy with a balloon. And um, he's, he's telling her, he says, uh, talking about her jacket, he says, hey, there's a finger in your pocket, you know? Um, and she reaches into her pocket and finds a bloody finger. You know, just kind of, just kind of crazy stuff going on here, right? Uh, so we don't really know about this little boy and this balloon, uh, what's going on here. So then uh, we go we go to the next scene where she ended up uh, making a call to uh, what we would assume is her lesbian lover. Uh, she she gets there and they're there, you know, making uh, uh, love, I guess you could say. Um, and, you know, she starts having these kind of really like crazy dreams as she's sitting there uh, waking up. You know, her girlfriend wakes her up and says, hey, like, what are you doing? You're, you're talking in your sleep again. 
And, you know, she's like, hey, well, you know, whatever. I've got to go. I've got to go see my mother. So we see that she returns. Uh, she goes to this, uh, to this, uh, basically this uh, hospital to see her mother there and uh, give her a bath. And her mother is there, uh, you know, uh, as she's giving her a bath. Uh, she's asking, where's her binky? And she's talking about, uh, you know... She, her daughter is there hanging out and starts going through all the bills and everything. She's like, hey, you know, how are we going to afford these bills? And the mother's like, oh, don't worry. The the boy with the balloon said she, that he would take care of it. And she kind of starts flipping out and losing, uh, like, losing her stuff. And uh, then then we flash to her sitting in there uh, talking to a psychologist, which is the same co- psychologist that we see at the very beginning of the book in Dr. Sweet. And they kind of go over some things. She's kind of sitting there uh, telling the doctor about just her history and just kind of these things that are on her mind and things that are uh, kind of driving her crazy, I guess you could say. And, you know, she's saying that, uh, she's like, oh yeah, you know, this is, this is, you know, just, just much like your mother, uh, much, much like your mother was. And she's like, Hey, you know, like why, why people keep saying that, you know? Um, and it just, just a really crazy story. And, uh, again, we get, uh, Lily once again has, has a run in, uh, with the, with this boy with the jacket and uh, you know, it's all, it's all, all, all these stories seem to be facilitated by our one main character throughout all this whole series is the Ice Cream Man, as they present the series. And I've got to tell you guys, like, I really enjoyed this Ice Cream Man comic book. I'm not sure if you guys have read it or not, but I would say it's something that you guys might definitely want to check out. I know they currently have, I believe, uh, three volumes available on trade paperback that you could find at your local comic book shop, and they're pretty up to date on these because I think uh, number. Issue number 16 will drop next month, and then I think in December, uh, the trade paperback of all of, of the next collection of these will be uh, being released. So I'm guessing they're probably putting four issues in each, just guessing. And that's pretty. That's a pretty quick turnaround in case you can't find the single issues at your local comic book shop, or you just want to save a few bucks and uh, get the trade paperbacks, and there's nothing wrong with that. And... Uh, you know, because sometimes saving a few bu- a few dollars uh, while we're out, you know, trying to read some comics is definitely a good thing, especially if they're already on trade paperback and, you know, you're not really a collector or anything. You should definitely look into that option. But altogether, I've got to say, guys, I really do like this Ice Cream Man series. Uh, the, the stories are always a little bit eerie. The art is really just kind of just like like I've shown you in, in pretty much all the issues. The same kind of art. All the characters look the same. You can definitely tell all these characters that Martin Morazzo is drawing and even a lot of the coloring with Chris O'Halloran, when you see their art together, you you can really tell who and what it is uh, when it comes to the story, and which I think in itself kind of makes it almost plain and almost makes it gives it that extra little bit eerie feeling to this whole story overall. Um, because I'm telling you, like these issues actually end up seeming a little bit creepy. But uh, let me know down in the comments below. Have you ever read Ice Cream Man? If not, does it sound like something you might be into? I can tell you for one, I really do like it. That's all I have for this video today, folks. Thank you all so much for tuning into the Second Street Marvel today. If you haven't already, please make sure you're subscribed and click that little bell so you get notifications anytime I have uploaded new content or anytime I plan on doing a live video. While you're at it, make sure you give this video a thumbs up or give it a thumbs down. I honestly don't care, but most of all, make sure that you share it with a friend and invite them to come hang out with us here on the Second Street Marvel. You all have a very good day. Happy reading. Get out and support your local comic book shop, and we'll see you in the next video. Later.